Now it's time to pass it over to Francie and Afri for the moment we've all been waiting for. The opening ceremony. Okay. Hello, hello. Yay. Okay, still a few, like two more seats up here. A few more there in the back, looking good. I am excited. I hope you are too. I am. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Um, yeah, so welcome to the opening ceremony. Um, we are super happy to have you all here. And just to give an overview of what will happen now, if it's your first time, this ceremony will hopefully get you equipped with all the knowledge you need to get hacking. And will also give you some background information on this event, this venue, everything you need to know, um, the people behind it. So let's dive right in. Oh, and I'm Franzi. I'm Afri, and if this is not the first time for you uh, at East Berlin, we will refresh your memories. Exactly. So, first reminder, East Berlin is first and foremost a hackathon. This may or may not be news to you, so everybody who is here actually has an active role, which means um, there are no spectators here who only come to watch you while you hack, but hopefully everybody has an active role and contributes to this event. With that, a warm welcome to all of our hackers, volunteers, mentors, judges, uh, speakers, the core team, am I missing anybody? Experience hosts, yes, welcome. Ooh. And the main goal of this event, which um, has not changed for a few years now, is really we want you to make a difference and build useful things. I think the first three talks have hopefully put you already in the exactly right mindset to do that. Uh, thank you so much to all of our previous keynote speakers. Um, yeah, really use this weekend to do something crazy, something useful, something daring, and not just the general hackathon random projects. And if you need some inspiration, please do read our manifesto. Okay, now the fun stuff, um, our house rules. Um, so first of all, no wristband, no entry. Uh, we only have a very limited uh, area for hackers to sit down and actually hack. Uh, we, that's, that's why we limit through wristbands. If you lose it, you have a problem, so um, make sure you don't lose it, because even if you're inside and you don't have a wristband, you may or may not get kicked out. Our venue is open 24 hours. I know this is not usual for hackathons, but we um, really want you to enjoy this um, all day long and all night long. We even have a midnight snack. So um, please come here whenever you like and stay as long as you wish. Um, at night, there are spaces to take a nap and relax. Um, there are beanbags and couches around. Um, we recommend the cinema, but um, keep in mind this is not a place to live. So um, you should hopefully have some place where you can take a shower or uh, actual sleep here. Um, all food and drink is provided by us. Um, there is a cafe and a restaurant here. Um, feel free to drink and eat as much as possible. Um, and that's Check the it. program times. The program times? The lunch hours open. Yes, and, um, um, there are breaks in between some of the courses. So <laughs> yeah. And last but not least, read our code of conduct. Um, it's, it's very welcoming, but also very um, straightforward. If you breach the code of conduct, it will lead to um, exclusion from the event, not only virtually, but also physically. So leave your ego at the door, be open, be respectful. Um, <laughs> this, this, this building has, we had, this is the first time we're showing this slide. This building has a very, dedicated um, security system with regard to the door locks. So I just explain it for you once, so you have seen it at least once. White means you can just go, so push it and the door will be open. Green means it's open, but you still need to tell, I want to use this door. So if it's green, you need to actually touch it until it gets white, okay? That's a bit confusing, but green means not go, but green means touch. And red means no, but... <laughs> Um, the truth is, the doors might work. 
deal. So uh, the most simple rule is just tr test it. Just if a door doesn't look very friendly to you, just pull it or push it and you will eventually find out if it will allow you to get through it. Exactly. Please just try it because I want to now run quickly with you uh, through the entire venue digitally and you will find out uh, once we open the upper floors that there is a lot to explore and in order to yeah, have enough hacking spaces for all of you, we really need to also make use of the small rooms which you may think they are closed but just try it. I mean if they are closed they won't open but uh, just push and try to open them and find out uh, what happens next. Um, because the factory is a rather huge uh, venue, it's actually not called factory anymore, maybe some of you have already realized, it's now the CIC Berlin um, but same old, same old uh, room structure, everything is exactly the same if you've been here before. We have five floors in total, I want to say, and uh, we start with the ground floor in um, Germany, that's floor zero, so all Americans now have to switch up um, their brain now a little bit. And uh, yeah, currently we are on the main stage um, here, and you have probably already had time to explore more or less all of the ground floor. Um, you have uh, received your wristband in the gift shop, um, or in front of the gift shop, you walked through um, the yard, you arrived here in Lexus, that's where we are now, cafe and restaurant area are next to it, and then we have the big yard with the tent and the DJ stage inside the tent and the note cafe where um, there's an info desk, mentors, um, books, coffee, everything uh, that you need to be happy, hopefully. And yeah, I'm just going to walk you through this. Uh, you can find this on the website as well. So if you ever get lost and there's roll-ups everywhere and volunteers everywhere, you should not get lost. Um, yeah, floor one is mainly for hacking. Please note that this little tip here will be used for judging on Sunday. So you will eventually have to leave this area, but not before you have to submit your project anyway. So this should not really be a big problem. Most of this is hacking spaces, also in the second floor. Um, always just try your luck and see which nice hacking corner you can find. There are lots of different hacking setups from um, group tables, single tables, uh, booths, setups, um, so really lots of creative space up there. Third floor, we actually found out um, is a little bit more is available than what is shown on this map here. Be a hacker and find out. Um, the fourth floor is the forbidden floor. I didn't want to name it this because I feel like some people might get uh, itchy hands already when l hearing that. So no please comment. don't go there. <laughs> it is rented to other companies and we don't have access there. And then last but not least, in my opinion, one of the nicest floors is the top floor where we have all fun things from the cinema where you can hang out. Uh, the workshops will also be streamed to the cinema so you can even chill there in very nice sofas and listen to the workshops from there if you like. We have the Cinnabar, um, a really nice hacking space, the wellness and planetarium area, the art exhibition. More later on what is exactly happening there. So um, you want to hack at East Berlin, um, there are some uh, essentials that you need to be aware of. You can forget about the rules, but don't forget about the essentials. So first of all, it's really essential to be on our matrix room, um, in our matrix space. It's East Berlin, a call on dod.ngo. Uh, we have a lot of resources there. You can, uh, we have a general chat, we have water cooler and whatnot, but also you can find uh, direct contact to our mentors. And um, yeah, just explore that and uh, connect with other fellow hackers. Team matching has multiple layers this year. Again, we also have a um, GitHub repository in addition to the um, Matrix channel. Also, after this opening ceremony, when the hacking officially starts, there will be a hacker matching or team finding session in the tent in the first courtyard. And what's new this year, we didn't give out Ether cards this year. We um, actually have a super gated faucet for the Polier and Toleski. Um, so you can uh, get a lot of testnet ease by authenticating with your Zupas account. With your East Berlin email address, you can uh, log into Zupas and you can generate your PCD, which will be used across the entire event. So um, 
do that, please, and check out what's going on in the program. If this is all confusing, you don't need to take a photo, it's all on our website, so if, if you haven't discovered our website yet, please check it out. Okay, just uh, cornerstones of our uh, schedule. Um, it's Friday now, uh, hacking will start after this around 7 p.m. Uh, team finding also starts after the, this and also the, all the floors will open after this session at 7 p.m. So it's kind of a most important time today. Um, here downstairs in Alexis there will be technical workshops if you want to check them out. And that's pretty much everything for today. Um, for the essentials, for the highlights. Uh, tomorrow we have an optional project pitches and feedback sessions. Is this here? Yes, so this is also here on stage. So if you hacked all night and you have second thoughts, you may just come here and uh, show those other fellow hackers and get feedbacks or even the mentors. Um, and then there will be mentoring expert office hours from 2 p.m. onwards in, is this? Yeah, in, in the Note Cafe at the mentor help desk. And then on Sunday, uh, hacking has, everything has an end, right? So submission deadline is 11.30 on Sunday, and then at 12 p.m. the judging starts. And winner announcements and closing ceremony at 5.30. Yes, and uh, I said in the beginning East Berlin is a hackathon, but of course, you know, we are not only a hackathon, we also have some keynotes, some workshops, some extravaganza, a lot of stuff going on in terms of side quests. Um, and yeah, we've already heard three of our wonderful keynotes um, before this opening ceremony. Big uh, thank you to the three speakers, that was amazing. The idea of these um, selected keynotes that we present you with is to really um, yeah, give a stage to topics that we think are important. Um, this year, most of the talks are focusing on uh, Ethereum values, anarchy, decentralization, censorship, regulation, privacy, tech activism, identity systems, and of course, open source software. And we really hope to, yeah, spark your ideas with this, um, maybe plant a little seed that keeps on growing over the weekend and um, not have just the regular uh, project update talks, but really some food to chew on um, over the weekend. And yeah, we've had the first batch of these talks right before the opening ceremony and we will have the second batch um, after you have submitted your project. So you can really enjoy and relax and just listen to a few more um, talks from 2 to 5.30. Um, but not only that, we of course also have technical workshops to get you set up um, and yeah, give you more technical input before you start hacking. Um, thank you so much to our workshops ho hosts. These workshops will happen here on stage after the opening ceremony, half an hour later. Um, and they cover a wide range from expertise levels, so to say. So we start with something um, for even complete beginners, build an Ethereum dApp in 40 minutes with Austin. Um, after that, we always dive gradually a little bit deeper, I want to say, into the expertise. Next up, we will have reinventing sign-in with Ethereum with Pedro, then um, integrating RPCH into your dApp. Um, that's actually interesting. You should all have received in your Hackers Essential bag a code that you can use um, to yeah, sign up at Hopper and then um, connect to RPCs privately. And I believe Tino will also be talking about why it even matters to connect to something um, that is private uh, when dealing with RPC nodes. Um, then we will have um, a workshop on secure communications with Waco, followed by two ZK topics. Um, the first being ZK versus trusted execution environments. What to do? What to choose? And then afterwards, we end the evening with how to add ZKPs to your app with Zupas. So stay tuned and no need to go to any party. We have program all night long. Uh, with program all night long or even all day long, I hand over to Lea, who will talk a little bit about what else we have in store over the weekend. Cool, thank you. Um, so, as you know, this year um, ETH Berlin is a sponsorless event, but nonetheless, um, we got a few of our friends and co conspirators involved, and we were brewing up a little of extravaganza for you throughout this weekend. 
And um, yeah, it will be available throughout um, all days uh, over the weekend, but I'm giving you a little bit of an overview of what you can expect. Um, there is, I think all of you by now have experienced the gift shop, the entry through the gift shop. Um, this is where you can get your ETH Berlin swag. And then on top of that, we had a little social experiment for everyone. The swag that's provided by the experienced hosts, you were supposed to take one item. And I'm sure all of you honored that. And the reason why we did that, we wanted to have a logo free event. So. If you haven't grabbed any of the swag yet, feel free to check it out there. Um, then obviously you need coffee throughout the weekend. On the ground floor, starting from tomorrow, you will be caffeinated by Eigenlayer and you'll also be able to read on, up on some blockchain essentials, so check it out for sure. And I've heard rumors that a few people will also uh, organize a chess tournament, so look out for that as well. Then on the fifth floor upstairs, um, that will be open from 7 p.m. on, you will find the wellness room is hosted by Scroll. So um, it will, throughout the night, you will be able to chill there, relax. But then starting on Saturday, there will be yoga sessions, Reiki sessions, all of that. And on the first floor in the library room, it will be split in, in two halves. So our friends from the Lens team, they will do screen printing. You'll also find your matcha tea there. And after you've been caffeinated, you can check out our um, the team from the Web3 privacy team. Oh, I actually have that on the, on the other slide. But OK, I'll tell you more um, what you can do on the other side of the library. If you read the ETH Berlin website and you've um, gotten some inspiration from our manifesto, you've seen that dystopian, the dystopian future is looming over us. And if you want to help us avoid that, the social distortion protocol has a little treasure hunt organized for you. And the entry point will is a little riddle in itself so it will be a little bit tricky to find so what i can tell you is look out for the black envelopes <laughs> when we stop thinking about all the dystopia we can maybe relax a little bit on saturday at the cocktail bar upstairs will also be in the fifth floor right next to cinnabar which will be hosted by celestia and um, as Avri already said, so this, um, the cinema that's upstairs is really nice. We will have movies, some cypherpunk movies um, playing there on Saturday. But yeah, all the workshops will be screened there too. It's really nice to take a nap. But as we've learned, we're not allowed to live up there. Next up. Um, the Infura team spun up a homage game, on-chain game, um, which is a homage to the girly testnet that was also born here in Berlin. So that will also be fun. Go check it out. And we're in Berlin after all, so um, we will have a club experience for you. It's a really small one, the smallest one on earth, which is hosted by Teledisco Dao. And some of you have maybe seen it already. It's in the courtyard. It's really fun. Go check it out. Right next up to it from Missing Link, there is a donut wall. So you can get sugar, caffeine, everything to power throughout the weekend. And then now to round it up, the privacy corner that I mentioned earlier, it's in the second half of the library on the first floor. And um, this is really, it's, uh, it's an amazing team. You can really privacy proof your project that you're hacking on. And um, tonight they'll have a little session and tomorrow as well. So, but they will also be around um, all weekend. So you should just like look out for them and talk to them. And that was maybe a lot to take in. Um, the exact schedules of yoga, etc., that will be also on our website. And um, maybe if you haven't seen it yet, there's this little red toggle um, that you just click on and then you'll see the schedule of all the experiences as well. Yeah, so some of the experience will already be available for you tonight. Um, some will start only tomorrow and then there is one that will start today, just now. 
That's it, then we can continue. Thank you, Lea. Okay, then I guess I am handing over immediately to Stina for the art bits. Hi everyone, um, if you are new to uh, East Berlin, you might not know that art is and has always been a really big part of this hackathon. If you aren't new, you know that we've done an exhibition every year and of course we have that this year again. Uh, it's a little bit different this year, we collaborated with Refraction, which has been really exciting. And of course we follow the topic like the rest of the hackathon, identity, open source technology and such. Um, but it's also inspired by the BYOB concept, which is by Raphael Rosendahl. So uh, you are welcome to maybe show something on your phone or any other device that you might have. There are a few spaces, uh, but you should definitely come and have a look. It will also be open to the public. It's basically the only space in the hackathon that's open to the public, uh, and it's open tomorrow between 11 and 5. During that time, we'll also do some talks, uh, which we, of course, are really excited about. So we've got a 12, we've got decentralized art organizations with Vincent and Benny. And then after that, we got art after NFTs with Joan and Billy. And uh, hopefully we'll see you there for those. And if not for those, um, we'll see you there for another time. Thank you, Stina. Okay, yes, a little applause in the middle, doesn't hurt anybody. Uh, we are back to rules, and for rules, I always yeah. hand over to Afri. Okay, I read the rules. <clears throat> I'll be quick. Hackathon rules, this applies to people that actually hack, so most of you will be hackers, so you will be hacking. Hopefully, um, a team, you can be hacking on your own, but you can also form teams. A team cannot be more than five people, though. And in addition to that, every one of you need to be present here physically at the venue, so no remote hacking, please. Um, code can only be committed after hacking officially starts. Uh, we will let you know when this happens, but most likely at 7 p.m. today, and only until the submission deadline on Sunday at 11.30. You cannot um, work together with other teams. Uh, you can, but you cannot use another team's source code. And lastly, the decision of judges is final for determining prizes and awards. I'll skip Yes, to. talking about prizes, let's jump right in. Of course, we have um, many nice prizes prepared for you this year again, um, backed by popular demand, the Hacker's Choice Award, where you actually decide who has won it. But this time, differently to two years ago, this will be voted on after the hackathon. So you will have one week time to look through all of the submissions on the portal, to really make up your mind, and then to cast your vote using Zupol. And for that, it is absolutely crucial that all of you have set up Zupol before we open that poll, because there's a lot of very immaculate ZK magic going on. And in order for you to be eligible to vote on this, you need to be included in the semaphore group before we open the poll. So please, if you have a second, maybe even today, um, go to zupas.org, use your East Berlin ticket email to log in. And if it's your first time, you will have to confirm your email and probably also set a password, and then you're all set and ready to go. And um, as we've mentioned before, the same Zupas um, login you will also require to claim your um, testnet ETH, to um, submit your project on the portal. Kirill will talk about this in a bit. And also to potentially take part in fun polls, which may or may not happen throughout the weekend as well. So it really takes only, um, I would say, less than a minute, goes really fast. And oh yeah, by the way, the winner of the Hacker's Choice Award, of course, also wins something, 7,000 die. But we also want to encourage you to hack on one of our main tracks. Um, and I'll just briefly let you know what they are and what they stand for and what you should focus on. Uh, each of these tracks, same as the Hacker's Choice Award, um, has a, a price of 7,000 die. The first one is uh, defensive tooling. It's basically everything that helps you to survive in this rough world, mainly um, privacy and security uh, software. Um, the second one is freedom to transact. Uh, that's um, basically just products that enable people to freely transact with other people. 
regardless of any regulations. This year new is uh, our social technologies track, um, platforms and tools that enable informed and collective decision-making, transparent governance and collaboration and coordination among decentralized communities. And lastly, my personal favorite is the uh, infrastructure track um, because where do you run your decentralized applications if you don't have a space for core protocol and infrastructure that is covered by this track. Yeah, so much for the tracks. We also, in addition, have excellence awards. And this is where it might get a little bit confusing, but bear with me for a second. So uh, when you decide what to hack on, you usually will decide it over a certain track. Or maybe you just want to hack outside of the tracks and only uh, go for the open track award. Um, that's your choice. But basically, what you can also do on top of that is think in a direction of an excellence award. An excellence award is um, not connected to the tracks and can be won in addition to any track. And uh, these are basically uh, extra awards for doing something really good, either having the best smart contracts, the best social impact, or the best user experience. I'm not going to read out what that means. I think you can all think for yourself. Um, those three projects will all get 5,000 die on top, depending on whether they also win something else or not. Um, so this is independent from the track awards, and these will be judged independently by our judges um, that we selected according to these criteria. And now we are trying to try, trying to try. We are trying something new this year, um, and we introduced the Meta Award. This one is something we really wanted to do for a long time. We want to. Um, encourage hackers to actually hack on um, existing uh, open source software and make either improvements or add meaningful contributions to existing open source software or maybe even build specific uh, new things for different uh, aspects of open source software. And um, we have provided a very long list of open source software that we use exclusively to organize ourselves and organize this event. And using open source software is so much better than using proprietary uh, software, but sometimes there are drawbacks, sometimes there is a feature, feature missing, sometimes the UX is a bit messy, you know? And therefore, we wanted to open up the Meta Award to uh, encourage you to look into this list. It's linked on our website. You can't click the slide, but you can click on our website. And um, just take a look at the software, and if you decide to go for this award, there is a um, uh, or a prize money of 4,000 die and uh, tickets for the DEF CON 7 in Southeast Asia for the entire team. Yes, curious to see what you guys come up with here. And now, in order to really make your mind up uh, how to hack, what to hack on, and how to then submit it, I hand over to the uh, amazing Kirill to talk more about the submissions and judging. Yeah, hey. So, I'm Kirill, and this year we are running our own custom build tool to like, let you submit your project, cho choose the tracks you are submitting to, and then judges will be using that to coordinate the judging. And hopefully, that will help the judgments to be fair and adequate. Uh, we built this tool not because it would be easy, but because we thought that it would be easy. And this is the first time we run it, so there might be bugs. I really encourage you to reach out to us as soon as you spot something, even if that's as minor as possible. I'm here all the time, and you can reach out to me. Uh, the tool is need, not like, integrated with uh, Ethereum, so like you only can log in with like MetaMask or compatible uh, browser uh, extension. So you don't have to have ETH or something on that account. You can create it afresh if you care about privacy. You don't even need to provide us your name so you can run by the nickname or be anonymous when you submit things. I wonder how we will uh, award you, but uh, that's your choice. And uh, to Separate those of you who are invited to the hackathon from everyone else. You would need to provide a two-pass claim, which came with your tickets, and after that, you will be authorized to submit the projects to the tool. Yeah, so happy hacking. Thank you. Thank you, Kirill. And now, um, talking about judging, Rose will walk you through the judging process. Cool. 
yeah, hi everyone, I'm Rose. And yeah, so judging is the moment when you're gonna present your projects that you have worked on the whole hackathon um, to the judges. And this is happening on the last day of the hackathon on Sunday. So yeah, 11.30 a.m. is the hackathon submission deadline. So please, no commits after that time anymore until the judging begins. And yeah, the pitching sessions start at 12 p.m. and they last until 4 p.m. So you each, um, each team is gonna um, be scheduled a specific time and you will see in the tool that Kirill just um, explained when you're gonna be pitching and where. So there, there will be some rooms, they're all on the first floor. And so how do the pitching sessions look like? So yeah, I mean, it's always a very timed um, process. So, but I, I believe together we can make it. Um, so it would be cool if you um, arrive at least 10 minutes before your scheduled time so that you can yeah, be, be prepared to go in the room. So the judges will all stay in the same room the whole time. And together with the volunteers, we will lead you to, um, to the judges. And so um, uh, the, it's like um, a rhythm of 10 minutes. So each team has basically 10 minutes. And how, those, how are those 10 minutes divided? So we have three minutes in the beginning for the judges to look at your project. So you will wait outside during that time. Then the volunteers will lead you in through the room. Um, you will set up if you have anything to set up. And then you have three minutes to pitch. Don't be mad with the volunteers if they cut your time, because it's really strict that you um, keep it to three minutes. And yeah, after the pitch, there's two minutes of Q&A. So the judges have the opportunity to ask you one or two questions. And yeah, after that, you will go out of the room. Um, and yeah, the judges will cast their votes and after that the next team will get in. So yeah, so that's basically the process. You can reread everything on the website in the hacker manual. And yeah, after 4.30 we will calculate all the votes from the judges and um, we'll release the winners at some point. And then at 5.30 there's the closing ceremony. Um, where we will announce all the winners and yeah, also it would be cool if the winners um, give a small presentation about the projects, yeah, what they built. And so yeah, so be prepared that you might um, present another time on the stage in the cer um, closing ceremony. Right, and yeah, so the judging criteria, if you want to know what the judges are actually looking at when you present um, in front of them, just um, yeah, go to the hacker manual and you can read um, the criteria that the judges will be looking at. Yeah, and that's all for the judging process. <laughs> Ask the volunteers if you forgot something or want more info. Wonderful, thank you, Rose. <laughs> we are handing over from one person to the next. Next up is Jacob, our mentor expert. Oh, expert even. Okay, yeah, so um, this year we're trying something a little bit new. Um, we don't have as many mentors as previous years, um, but we have very good mentors, of course. Um, and we also try to have more focus on peer-to-peer -peer mentoring. So we really encourage hackers to go into the, the mentoring channel in Matrix and help each other out as well. Like, I know that there are some of the hackers here who have knowledge about very specific things, so it would be great if you also want to help out the other hackers uh, to solve their problems. Um, for asking questions online in the mentoring uh, matrix room is great. There's a link for it here. Otherwise, go to the cafe that is located next to the big tent in yard one. There, there will be uh, mentors every day between, uh, yeah, basically from now until midnight, and then again tomorrow from eight until midnight, and the first, uh, the last day on, from eight in the morning until closing. So we'll be around. Um, you also might see mentors in the venue walking around with a button saying mentor. You can ask them whatever you want. Furthermore, tomorrow from four to five, we have some mentoring expert sessions, or kind of office hours. We'll have uh, legal questions from, I think it's, uh, yeah, from, 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 from two. And then we have a session on UX UI at three and DAOs at four. So please 
come ask whatever questions you have. We'll have some of the leading experts in these topics. So um, don't hesitate, and I'm sure they'll be very helpful uh, and would love to sit down and have actual deep conversations about some of the topics or questions that you might have. I think that's all. So yeah, please don't hesitate to ask any questions. Thanks, Jacob. Now it's my turn again. So after all the hacking, judging, mentoring, etc., if there's still some energy left in you, uh, we also have an after party. Um, big, big shout out and thank you to Tux and Entropy, because without them, we wouldn't have an after party. This uh, one is not organized by us, but um, yeah, by Entropy. Thank you so much. You can arrive there from 8 p.m. onwards. It's in Eden, or Aden, which is very close, basically walking distance from here. We have program here on Sunday until 8, so we will start to throw you out here at 8, which gives you the opportunity to walk right to the after party if you dare to do so, and your East Berlin wristband gets you in there. Um, my recommendation is to come early because um, these parties are always oversubscribed. Party venues are always a little bit smaller than the actual venue, so if you really, really want to be there, then I recommend you to go early. Um, last but not least, your ETH Berlin wristband gets you in, but you might also have seen an additional wristband in the Hackers Essentials little bag that is in the gift shop. Um, in there, we have a plus one wristband. So if somebody wants to go with their partner, friend, colleague, etc., that wristband is for them. And um, we are getting towards the end of uh, this opening ceremony, and I just wanted to mentioned that um, behind this, you have seen some of our faces already, but behind this uh, massive event is actually a, a big team. And um, here you can see their faces. And um, I want to mention one thing that is, we are all doing this in our free time. Nobody gets paid for this. And um, I really want to thank everyone who's on this slide personally for spending so much time on this event and makes it possible. So maybe give them a warm applause. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, enough of the applause for now. You can do that again on Sunday if you really enjoyed this event. Um, but yeah, also, if you see them around, obviously, feel free to ask them any question. Um, give them a hug. Uh, give us feedback on how we are doing, etc., etc. Um, talking about questions, I think this is our last slide. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, I cannot even believe that you would have any questions after this very elaborate opening ceremony. But if you still have questions, no worries. We have an info desk, um, which is lo located also in this note cafe. So on the very, from my side right, from your side left here, um, next to the tent, there is an info desk, signs, everything, uh, where there will be volunteers. And you can ask them any question you have. There will also be the mentor help desk almost exactly in the same area. So they can determine whether this is a volunteer or a mentor question. You are anyways right if you go into this cafe and ask your question there. Um, volunteers this year to make everything a little bit more difficult wear black t-shirts and the hackers wear yellow t-shirts. So we wanted to give hackers back a little bit of colors, not always only black t-shirts. So this time we are wearing the black t-shirts, um, but you can always identify us also at the red wristband, which only volunteers and core team have. Um, there's a lost and found at the registration desk where you collected your wristband. So if you're looking for something, or if you have found something, bring it there. And um, I know it's been mentioned quite a lot, but again, we put quite a lot of work into the Hacker Manual, your one-stop shop for all information and questions around the hackathon experiences and more. So please do check it out. And um, with that, it is not exactly hack, uh, uh, 7 p.m. yet, but we need to still do it either ways. The hacking starts now. now.